science fans and welcome to Xi'an Sha. Today, we're going back to basics and complete our discussion of ecology for the season by talking about the Earth's feedback mechanisms. So far, in our Back to Basics series on the environment, we've talked about how ecology is the discipline that studies our home, planet Earth and how the environment is everything and anything around us. And last week, we continued our discussion by talking about geographic areas where biotic and abiotic factors work together to form a bubble of life. These geographic areas are known as ecosystems. We also talked about how living components of ecosystems can be classified as producers, consumers, and decomposers with producers producing food from the sun, consumers consuming plants or animals to survive, and decomposers facilitating the process of decomposition to return all essential nutrients to the soil. <laughs> we then talked about how abiotic components and factors create unique combinations that allows for a huge diversity of plants and animals to thrive in different areas of the planet. And it is these unique combinations of living and non-living things that result to the huge variety of both terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. We've certainly talked a lot about the environment in this Back to Basics series. But for now, we'll start discussing how the Earth actually talks back to us. When we hear the word feedback, we often think of comments or suggestions that we hear from people to help us ideally improve our work. Like how our teacher gives us tips or corrections so we can improve our writing or how we solve math problems. We also tend to get feedback from family to help improve how we do our household tasks like cleaning our rooms or helping cook in the kitchen. We can also get feedback from our friends, like when we play games, when they tell us how to improve our tactics and techniques so that we can win. But what does feedback really mean? Feedback is the outcome or product of an action used to influence how that initial action will proceed in the future. For example, we have a forest, the La Mesa Watershed, that covers more than 2,600 hectares of land in the areas around Quezon City, Caloocan, and Rizal. The La Mesa watershed comprises a variety of ecosystems that is home to many indigenous and endemic species of flora and fauna. As a watershed forest, it helps clean up the air by absorbing carbon dioxide and other pollutants. But at the same time, it also helps capture fresh water from the rain and other freshwater ecosystems like rivers and streams so that we can use it for our daily needs. The watershed currently experiences illegal logging and we have lost thousands of trees that clean the air and help capture water. Because we're losing the forest and all that it does for us, how do you think it affects our daily lives? Metro Manila and its neighboring areas have been continuously having water problems for more than a decade and it's linked to water shortages that is a consequence of the loss of capacity of our watershed. What I'm trying to say here is the water shortages that we are experiencing is the Earth's feedback on how we've been managing our forests and watersheds. And that's what's scary about the Earth's feedback mechanisms. Most of the times, the feedback is much, much larger in scale than the actions that were initially done and at the same time, they also affect people who were barely involved in the first action in the first place. So it's really important to understand how the environment works so we can better understand whenever it tries to communicate with us. And speaking of feedback, there are two types of feedback, positive and negative. Positive feedback is a reaction from the environment that results to the continuation or increased intensity of an original action. The Hundred Islands National Park in Alaminos, Pangasinan is an example of an ecosystem that has given positive feedback. 
The Hundred Islands National Park is the first national park in a protected area located in Alaminos, Pangasinan in the Northern Philippines. The islands, totaling 124 at low tide and 123 at high tide, are scattered in the Lingayen Gulf covering an area of 16.76 square kilometers. Just like many coastal communities here in the Philippines, the Hundred Island National Parks used to suffer from pollution and overfishing. And because of this, despite being a beautiful natural formation, a lot of people didn't really want to visit the area. But in 2005, the administration, management, maintenance, and operation of the whole Hundred Islands National Park, including all the activities, facilities, and improvements thereafter, were transferred from the Philippine Tourism Authority to the city government of Alaminos, Pangasinan. This initiative led to the empowerment of local communities to be more responsible for their national park. They started doing coastal cleanup activities and enforcing sustainable tourism practices in such that it resulted to the beautification of the area and to the return of thousands of fishes for the fishing industry. It's a beautiful example of how the positive feedback from the environment, the return of the crystal clean waters, and the return of fish in the area was heard clearly by the local communities and has now empowered them to continue sustainable practices to maintain the wonderful state of the Hundred Islands National Park. But then there's also negative feedback, which is a type of response from the environment that causes the initial action to stop. The Marikina River is an example of a freshwater ecosystem that has been fighting back through negative feedback. Marikina River is a river in eastern Metro Manila, Philippines. It is the largest tributary of the Pasig River with headwaters located in the Sierra Madre Mountains in the Rizal province. Due to negligence and industrial development, the Marikina River became very polluted and a lot of local administrations have tried to solve this problem. The pollution of the river has led to its infestation of janitor fish, an inedible fish that has killed off the local fish species such as Martinico, Ayungin, and Bia that the local communities used to capture and consume. And perhaps we are also all too familiar with the devastating floods experienced by Marikina City during the rainy season because of the blockages in their river systems. And this is the Earth's negative feedback from the pollution. And due to this negative feedback, the local governments of Marikina City has been active in maintaining the cleanliness of their river and also in improving solid waste management systems throughout the city. They are in fact one of the best cities to emulate when it comes to controlling pollution. However, it will take some time before all the past actions and the negative feedback that we're getting from it will be corrected. Apart from that, the environment also has complex systems in place that basically shows us that the pollution in that local area alone is not the main cause for the flooding that is being experienced by the city. And speaking of complex, one example of the complex systems found in an ecosystem would be the flow of energy. In a typical food chain, you have a producer creating energy from the sun, and then it is eaten by a consumer. And the consumer could get eaten by another consumer, and so on and so forth, until the decomposers get to do their job once all these organisms pass away. It's a straightforward process that has allowed for the survival of plants and animals and planet Earth for thousands of years. But because of large-scale destructive processes that we, as humans, have continued to do for hundreds of years, we have destroyed many ecosystems and caused the extinction of thousands of plants and animals. An example of a negative feedback related to our disruption of food chains and food webs would be the infestation of the crown of thorns starfish in our coral reefs. The crown of thorns starfish is a sea star named for the spines that cover its body and arms. This species is a well-known coral predator and outbreaks of tens of thousands of individuals have been known to destroy coral reefs in various areas. In an ideal world, the populations of the crown of thorns starfish 
could be controlled when schools of coral fish eat their sex cells or their young. As adults, they are also consumed by the giant sea snail called the triton. But overfishing for food or for the ornamental fish trade has left our reefs vulnerable to the overpopulation of the crown of thorns starfish. And if our reefs are destroyed, either by the overpopulation of the crown of thorns starfish, the warming seawaters, or ocean acidification, all negative feedback from the environment, then our coastal communities will suffer as they are highly dependent on the fishing industry for their survival. Now, if you want to learn more about the impacts of the ornamental fish trade on the environment, then please watch this video that will pop up over here at the end of this one. Now, this is just one example of how our actions led to negative feedback from the environment that can destroy our way of life. What this means is, if we continue on with our habits that are destructive to the environment, a lot of food webs and food chains will collapse, and this will lead us to being unable to produce or capture our own food. And that's it for our discussion on feedback mechanisms in the environment. I hope it has given you food for thought and how it's actually worth it to evaluate our current lifestyle so that we can leave a better earth for the next generations. And remember, there are two types of feedback, positive and negative. Positive feedback is a reaction from the environment that results to the continuation or increased intensity of an original action. But then there's also negative feedback, which is a type of response from the environment that causes the initial action to stop. And it is essential for us to study the Earth and its feedback mechanisms so that we can learn to listen and respond accordingly and we can figure out a way to live sustainably here in our home, planet Earth. I hope you were able to learn something from our short video today on the Earth's feedback mechanisms. If you did, I hope you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to message me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comments section below. Thank you very much and see you around!